Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is so much fun, like so much fun. We're testing out viral makeup dupes. A few of these I'm kind of familiar with, but we're going to be testing them out side by side. So we have the high-end side and the drugstore side, and this was, it was just so much fun. So we're gonna get right into it. This will be the drugstore, oh no, <laughs> oh my gosh. This will be the high-end side, this will be the drugstore side. So one of the top videos I found duping the e.l.f. in Milk Hydro Grip was at 42,005 likes. So I'm assuming a lot of people agree with that. So we're gonna do um, Milk and then Elf Hydro Grip on this side. You know I have not used Elf Hydro Grip in years. Ever since I tried um, Elf Jelly Pop, I kind of was using that for the longest time. And then obviously Elf Power Grip, which I don't think is as good as Jelly Pop. I think Jelly Pop is better than Milk Hydro Grip. Elf one, I'm gonna have to go in with a little bit more. So the Elf one has more of like a thick glue-like consistency, it feels like. I am editing this clip right now and I am so confused about whatever I'm talking about throughout these clips because I keep saying the Elf Hydro Grip and the milk power grip so I'm interchanging the brands between the two primers and then I'm also editing out certain parts where I know that I was actually talking about the elf primer but I might have referred to it as the milk primer so I'm going to really quickly insert this clip and tell you that what I was trying to say throughout the clip is that the milk hydro grip is a lot more fluid and smooth. And then on the side with the e.l.f. Power Grip, it's a much thicker texture. It's a lot tackier. They feel pretty much the same, except e.l.f. is noticeably stickier and tackier, so feels a little bit more gripping. Okay, so now we're finally gonna do it. The side-by-side -side test of the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter and the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. Charlotte we have in the shade number three, and then e.l.f. we have in the shade number one. One. When I use, ooh, this one's really light. I'm gonna blend that a bit more, but that's the uh, e.l.f. one. So when I use the uh, Charlotte Tilbury illuminators, I use them as like all over the face illuminators. You can target them onto specific areas of your face if that's the way you prefer to wear them. But I really like the way they look when they're worn just kind of like all over the skin and then underneath your foundation. Oh my gosh, I love the Charlotte Tilbury. Hollywood Flawless Filter. This is just one of my absolute favorite illuminators. I know I'm the outlier here because I feel like everyone has just gone absolutely crazy for the e.l.f. one, myself included. I love the one from e.l.f., but Charlotte's still has that little something special to it. I'm gonna try actually building up the e.l.f. one just a touch more on this side because I feel like I used a little bit more of the Charlotte Tilbury one and then build this up just a touch more. I feel like if you didn't tell me which was was on which side. I don't know if I'd be able to tell a difference. Honestly, they look shockingly the same, especially for the e.l.f. one being like a couple shades lighter than the Charlotte Tilbury one. I was still able to like spread it out and get it to not look so starkly light against my skin tone, but the overall like pearl and light reflection is spookily similar. This foundation dupe shocked me. There were 81,000 people that liked the dupe of the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation and the L'Oreal infallible foundation. If you watch my dupe videos, you probably know I don't dupe foundations very often. I find it to be one of the harder things to dupe. I can always find like big differences between the two formulas, but this really seems to be a lot of people are liking it. So I'm gonna do my Estee Lauder on this side. This is so, so, so full coverage. So with the Estee Lauder one, you really don't need a lot. A little bit goes such a long way with Estee like I feel like that was even too much and that was just a little tiny finger dot application all over the skin. But then we're gonna do the L'Oreal Infallible Wear. Same thing, this one has really crazy coverage. This is noticeably more fluid right off the bat. And I feel like this one does set down nice and matte. Okay, so the L'Oreal one seems to be like clinging to dry patches a little bit more. So I'm just gonna remove that little area where it was clinging to the dry patch and then try to reapply 
see if that makes a difference. I'm gonna take a tinier brush and just work that L'Oreal one into the crease of my nose a little bit better. And honestly, I'm kind of shocked that they do set down so similar because like I said, the L'Oreal one is just so much, like it's even running out of the cap after I've dispensed it. The L'Oreal one is just so much more fluid than the Estee Lauder one that I was thinking the L'Oreal one was gonna have less coverage. This is another dupe I've seen a lot. The Yves Saint Laurent Touche Clock Concealer and then the e.l.f. Brightening Concealer. I really like both of these concealers, so I think it will be interesting to see them both applied at the same time and how they go side by side. I'm gonna do a little bit of brightening around the nose. I actually like really love the e.l.f. one. I've mentioned it in quite a few videos for being a favorite because I think it's really nice. It's super lightweight and it's nice and soft and it never looks like cakey or anything. We'll blend the YSL out first. Really nice and lightweight. This is great for liquid highlighting on the face as well. So like if you want to put it on the high points and just get a little bit of a lift from the product, it does that fabulously. And it's just kind of like this gorgeous lightweight milky kind of like veil of coverage. If you wear it on its own, it's very subtle and very soft, but you can also wear it with, you know, your foundations and it will still provide you with an extra layer of coverage. And I love how it just always looks really nice and fresh under the eye. We'll blend out the elf. The coverage should be pretty spot on similar. Okay, yeah, these are the same. <laughs> They're super similar. I'm honestly not shocked by this because I've even compared the e.l.f. brightening concealer to the YSL Touche Clot because I feel like they're very similar, but I think especially side by side, you can really tell. And gosh, they like feel so similar and they blended out both beautifully. This is another dupe I was pretty shocked by. So the new Charlotte Tilbury bronzer, the one that's the cream I've mentioned loving this in multiple videos, was due by the new Revolution Cream Bronzer. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I was not really drawn to this. Although I am a Makeup Revolution lover, I just felt like the tones of the Revolution Cream Bronzer were all rather gray and I wasn't like gravitating towards them because although this isn't particularly warm, this one from Charlotte Tilbury, it still has like a little bit more warmth to it than the Revolution one. The nice thing about the Charlotte one is I personally feel like it's kind of a hybrid between a cream bronzer and a powder bronzer. So if you've used other cream bronzers, you know they are typically, not always, but typically pretty emollient. And sometimes that can be a little bit difficult to work with because if you're used to only using powder bronzers, it can be a little bit of a learning curve because getting the blending down and application can sometimes be a little bit difficult. But then once you get the hang of it, it's easier. But with the Charlotte Tilbury one, it really made it so easy and intuitive to use because this powder bronzer specifically from Charlotte is a little bit more on the dry side. I feel like it was just so nice and beginner friendly and definitely one of my favorite cream bronzers. So there's the Charlotte one. I love how you just really do get that like true airbrushed finish from it. And we'll try the Revolution one. I've actually not even touched this one. It's not... <sighs> It's definitely not as clay-like as the Charlotte Tilbury one. I feel like I got way too much on my hand, so we're gonna dab that off. And this is pretty darn gray toned. I feel like I'm not gonna get a ton of warmth from this. You can see it's just kind of not going on as easy. I'm gonna try to put a little foundation up there, smooth it out a bit, and then apply it like around the edge of my face. I feel like it's not giving me, it's just not, it's not, no. We're gonna stop because I don't want to like completely ruin the base. So this is really what I kind of meant. Like the, you can see the Charlotte Tilbury one. It has a good amount of warmth to it, although it is a brown. Um, with the Revolution one, it's rather cool toned. And I just don't feel like the Revolution one gives the same warmth like warm sunny vibe that the Charlotte one has and I also don't think it goes on the same. I feel like even, you can see me running my finger over it, it's got this really gorgeous kind of clay-like formula to it and then with the Revolution one, um, it's much more almost oily and you can really see the two tones side by side right there. Um, look how much light is reflecting back off of the Revolution one compared to the Charlotte. This next dupe also shocked me, the Chanel Cream Blush, 
with the e.l.f. putty blush. So not the luminous putty blush. I had by chance two really similar shades in the e.l.f. putty blush and then the Chanel cream blush. So I was like, this is perfect. I can do it for the video. Okay, so we'll do Chanel on this side. I love these Chanel lip and cheek balms. They're so pretty and they're really nice and dewy, but they also have quite a good amount of punch. Like I barely tapped my brush into that. And then on the other side of the brush and the other side of the face, we're gonna do the e.l.f. one. On this side of the face, I also do kind of think these will be pretty similar dupes because cream blush, if it's good, it's good. You know what I mean? Um, I will say the Chanel one is significantly more pigmented, but the e.l.f. one can be built up. And these colors actually look really similar. The shades actually look really good. They look really similar. I'm having to dip into the e.l.f. a little bit more, but overall, all they look really good i was shocked by this one too i just need to stop saying that but i mean some of these really i was like huh i never thought of that um okay so we have the rare liquid illuminator duped by the mega glow wet and wild highlight um they're pretty similar but i feel like the rare ones really can't be duped because they look like liquid shimmering glass on your skin and the nice thing about the rare ones i will say is they almost have this kind of like oily slick sheen to them so there's the rare one. And the Mega Glow ones are also really great, but they kind of disappear when you spread them out and you don't get that same reflex. You can dot this directly onto your skin, but if you've used Rare Beauty products before, then I feel like you know they're kind of crazy pigmented. Like the Rare Beauty products are very intense, picking it up on a brush and then just lightly applying it to the high points of your face. I love the Rare Liquid Illuminators. You can really customize how much intensity you want from them. I don't even know if I could use up an entire Rare Liquid Illuminator because they just have some of the best pigmentation ever. Same thing with the e.l.f. Mega Glow. You could dot this right on the face if that's what you wanted to do, but I definitely recommend using the back of your hand as a palette and then applying it right to the high points. I will say the rare one is definitely easier to sheer, sheer out. And then the e.l.f. one, or I'm sorry, not the e.l.f., the Wet n Wild one is a little bit, like a little bit more pearly almost. But if you're wearing such a small amount, they definitely have really similar effects on the skin. Okay, this one wasn't really shocking to me. I've definitely duped these before for you as well. The Anastasia Brow Freeze with the e.l.f. Brow Lift. I have thoughts on these being duped, so I'll talk about that a little bit. I think the Anastasia one is significantly more snatching. Like, it definitely makes your brows a lot more snatched, and you can really get that, like, frozen effect with your brows, which I really like. This is my third tube of this, because when I do my brow or when I do my makeup, even if I'm not wearing face makeup, I always do my eyebrows. You can really like totally control your brows and they'll stay like that all day. I have worn this on Velocicoaster and gotten off of Velocicoaster. And I don't say that like I wore this one time on Velocicoaster and my eyebrows stayed in the same spot. I mean like I wear this to the parks and like have been on Velocicoaster multiple times in one day and my eyebrows have stayed the same. With the e.l.f. one, I definitely think it's the closest option. I've tried to Anastasia Brow Freeze, but it still doesn't have that crazy intense hold like the Anastasia one does, but it is, in my opinion, the next best thing, especially if you, like, really don't care to spend that much money on the Anastasia. Just get the e.l.f. one. Like, it is good. It's definitely a dupe, and it's it's good. Like, I have nothing negative to say about the e.l.f. one. The Anastasia one might be more beneficial because I find it to just be a little bit more water resistant and just overall, like I said, just a stronger hold of a product and just lasts a lot longer on my face personally. But the e.l.f. one is so good. I'm going to say it again because this one really did. Like this one was one of the ones that shocked me the most. This one did shock me the most. It did. <laughs> the MAC MAC Stackscara was duped on TikTok by the Essence Double Trouble Mascara. I never, I haven't tried this, but I would never think that these would be dupes um, specifically because the brushes are so incredibly different. Um, so blue handle is Essence and black handle is MAC. MAC 
is just a completely different animal when you're talking about wands. I like the both of these mascaras and I, I think that they're both great. I've just never tried them uh, side by side. And honestly, I wanna say, I feel like if you say that these are dupes, then I need the context. Do you mean they just give a similar effect or does it mean that you can stack the Essence Double Trouble into Oblivion like the Max Stack Scara or do they just look really similar? Okay, so there's one coat of Essence Double Trouble and then we'll do a second coat. And I love both of these mascaras. So honestly, if they're dupes, I'm gonna be like, what? All right, so here is three coats of the Essence. I really wouldn't probably take it much further than that. The MAC one honestly did shock me when I tried it for the first time because I was not expecting it to be as good as it is because the brush is so clunky but i feel like this is one of those products where it actually does live up to the hype i have to wait until it gets just slightly uh tacky just slightly tacky so that it's a little bit drier and then the formula can almost kind of cling to itself as you build up the coats they're kind of similar but i don't think dupes not for my lash type personally. I will say the MAC mascara, because it's really that great buildable formula, it tends to really hold its own. And yes, I could go in with a lash comb, but this is three coats and it just kind of gives this really nice thick strip lash effect. Um, and it looks really nice and wispy with tons of length and tons of volume. Whereas the Essence one with three coats, I feel like we kind of got a little bit of a mess going on where the lashes aren't really quite as separated as on the MAC Side, and I feel like it almost made the lashes like it's too much mascara on top of itself to where my lashes started clinging together whereas with the MAC one honestly because of the way this brush is you can kind of comb through your lashes with the spikes with so much ease that it lends itself better towards the stacking feature of the product this is another one I found slightly confusing because with lipstick shades it can be the same exact lipstick but on different skin tones it's gonna look completely different. So a lot of the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk dupes are different. It'll be different shades of different lipsticks, but on, you know, people because of their skin tones, they look, it looks like the exact same lipstick. The one that I saw that I felt like was really similar when swatched side by side on the person's lips. It seemed to be the Barest Nude shade from the L'Oreal Color Riche line. It looked the same in the video. So I wanna see if it is. So Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk, uh, L'Oreal Color Riche. I'm gonna give this product or the dupe its best chance. So I'm gonna put some lip liner on. Same lip liner on both sides. I feel like Charlotte's lipsticks also, they're really hard to dupe. She has some of the best lip color shades. Pillow Talk is one of the only true pink lipsticks that I love. Okay, so then we have 800, Ferris Nude. At first I thought it looked I don't know. At first I thought it looked really similar. The vibe is there, but the L'Oreal one is lighter and more cool toned. So not a dupe. Unfortunately, I don't think this one is a dupe. The shade you could say is also in the same genre, but the Charlotte one is just so much more like fleshy and pretty. And then the L'Oreal one is cooler, slightly pulling lavender on my skin tone, where I just feel like the Charlotte one looks a lot more feminine and fleshy, which I really like. And then we're gonna do side by side Fenty Fussy and Milan, not Milani, Maybelline Moon. So the lifter glosses are definitely the most similar thing you can get to the Fenty gloss bombs. I've duped these as Fenty gloss bombs on my YouTube channel before. Just kind of like glassy, gorgeous gloss. And Moon and Fussy is the one that everybody on TikTok says is a dupe for like the pearly pink. This is the Fenty side, that's the L'Oreal side. I will say the Fenty one is slightly more like a really gorgeous, soft, pearlized shimmer throughout the product. Like it just kind of looks like pearlized pink all over the lips, whereas the Maybelline one is slightly like a more translucent gloss with a little bit of a pink tint. Like the, the difference is so subtle. This is me being nitpicky for you and really telling you the differences that I see. 
The Fenty one just kind of gives you a pearl pink finish. The same thing with the Maybelline one. It's just, you can see a little bit of your natural color from behind it, but overall, like the vibe is the same. Overall though, what do you think? This is the high-end side and this is the drugstore side. We went for a very like glowy, pearly look today. I'm actually liking this. I feel like this is a very pretty look. Okay, final thoughts on these viral TikTok dupes, the Hydro Grip and the Elf Power Grip. Perform very similar, but I was honestly shocked at how much more fluid and and dare I say comfortable the Hydro Grip felt in comparison side by side to the Elf. This one just feels a lot more sticky and tacky and was a little bit more work to blend out, which I always thought that they were the same, like I said, but um, overall they made the makeup go on the same. Hollywood Flawless Filter and Liquid Halo Glow, shockingly similar. I was secretly anticipating during the application side by side to like the Charlotte Tilbury one better because I thought it was just going to have a little something extra. But then looking at them up close, they really did look like dead ringers for each other. These gave a very similar effect. However, I did notice significantly more clinging effect from the L'Oreal Infallible. It seemed to gravitate towards dry patches a little bit more, but overall they did set down really similar. And I think that um, if you're looking for like a long wear matte finish foundation, this is a great affordable option. Uh, but I still do like the Estee Lauder double wear as well. With the concealers, again, secretly in in my mind, I was honestly thinking I was going to prefer the YSL side. Although I do love the e.l.f. one, I just anticipated the YSL side to have a little bit something extra. I love the both of these. I've been such a big fan of the YSL Touche Cloth for years. It is something that I always repurchase. I genuinely love this product, but the e.l.f. one is just as good. No, no, not at all. No, this one is way better. Like this one blows the Revolution one out of the water. Chanel and Elf, yes. Shockingly, yes. Very spookily similar. <laughs> Not dupes, similar. Kind of the same vibe. I think the rare one has the unique ability to really give you a glass-like shine without being overly pearlized, whereas the Wet n Wild Mega Glow is very pearlized and gives you a beautiful glow nonetheless. But the rare one, it's just, it, it's something special and I don't think it's exactly what I would consider to be a dupe. Anastasia and Elf, um, like I said, I've gone into further depth about this in other videos. If you really want strong industrial strength hold, go with the Anastasia. If you're not looking for that, the Elf one is just as good, both great. This is a no for me because the Mac, Mac Stack Scara is actually formulated and Although the brush is scary and looks medieval, it really does give you the ability to stack the mascara to the point where it looks like false strip lashes. Double Trouble is a good mascara nonetheless, but in my opinion and on my lash type, they are not dupes. This was a hard no from me, not dupes. Pillow Talk blows this shade out of the water. Pillow Talk is like one of the best pinks ever to exist. And then the Fenty Fussy and Milk, not Milk, the Maybelline Lifter Gloss. These are great swap outs. If you're not looking to splurge on Fenty, the Lifter Gloss gives you the same effect. It's what I'm wearing on my lips right now. Both of them, um, really great, great dupes. Okay, so that's it for this video. I had shockingly so much fun filming this for you because I was testing other people's dupes side by side. And I think that's what made it so fun is because usually when I do dupe videos for you, I always show the product side by side and the way they perform together, but they're like my dupes that I've tested out. So I know, or I at least personally feel as though they are the same and similar products, but trying other people's dupes as side by side like this is so much fun. So if you have any other viral dupes that you see, let me know, cause I would definitely love to do this again in the future if you enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a comment down below. Let me know some of your dupes. I could do a video testing out my subscribers dupes. That could probably be so fun too. I would love that if I could do a full face of your dupes. So I'm gonna list and link everything in the description box and then I'm also gonna have my TikTok, my Instagram, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in my next one. Leave a comment just to say hi to. Bye everyone.